I'm Rachel Hernandez, real estate investor turned mobile home investor and best-selling author. I make a living investing in mobile homes for cash flow for long-term passive income. After many mistakes and lessons learned, I've been able to create the kind of life where I can do the types of things I want to do, not have to do. I created the Adventures in Mobile Homes podcast to share with you what I've learned so you can spend more time with family, friends, and do things you love. Mobile home investing can help you get there. If you want to hear real stories with practical and actionable advice you can use from someone who's been in the trenches and who's still investing today to create the type of life you love, then you're in the right place. Let's get started. Well, hey there, and welcome to the Adventures of Mobile Homes podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Hernandez, aka Mobile Home Girl of adventuresofmobilehomes.com. Thank you so much for joining me here on the 14th episode of the podcast. Now, just in case you missed it, be sure to tune in to the last episode where I talk about the truth about mobile home parks and whether they're a good investment for the long term. You can find it along with the show notes at www.adventuresofmobilehomes.com slash 13. And that is the number 13. Okay, so let's get started. So last week, I talked about the truth about mobile home parks and really what's involved when owning them as a mobile home investor based on the experiences of other mobile home park owners I've known. Again, you really have to read between the lines when listening to podcasts and reading articles about mobile home parks. When you hear about them being such great investments, there may be a motive there. And it may not be in your best interest. But today, I want to talk about a subject that I get asked about all the time. And that is how to fund your deals as a mobile home investor. When you're just getting started, how exactly do you buy these mobile homes? And where do you find the money to buy them? What options are out there? And what is the best method to take when purchasing these homes? So today, I'm going to talk to you about how you can buy mobile homes as a beginning investor, what options are out there, and how exactly I buy them as a mobile home investor. But before we move on, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Hey there, Rachel here. Are you interested in mobile home investing? If yes, I've got a free mobile home investing course for you. It's called What You Need to Know to Get Started in Mobile Home Investing. It details all the ins and outs of what you need to know before you get started as a mobile home investor. With so much information out there, it's overwhelming to go out and search for what you're looking for. So I put my knowledge and expertise in mobile home investing to work. And it's all in this free training course. You can find it at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash free training class. Again, www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash free training class. Grab your seat and get started today. Now, 
back to the show. Okay. First things first. Before you even start buying mobile homes to buy and hold, you have to get your finances in order. I know you've heard this before, but it's true. I've said this over and over and over again. You cannot start investing if you don't have your finances in order. First, you need to know how much money is coming in and how much money is coming out every month. Then you've got to figure out if you've got enough money saved up to start buying and holding. If not, then you need to build up cash before you can even take this step. So figure it out on your own before you buy anything or even start research on buying mobile homes. Trust me, the last thing you want to do is get into a situation where you don't have enough money to handle the holding costs of a mobile home that you just bought. Because, as we all know as real estate investors, what can go wrong will go wrong. And when it does, you have to be prepared, both financially and mentally. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, if you don't have the money to start buying and holding, you can start off by becoming a bird dog or a wholesaler finding mobile home deals for other investors. This is a good way to build up cash. And what I did when I first got started in mobile home investing. Another option is to just save up money every month from a job or a side business that you have until you get enough money to buy and hold your first mobile home deal. Have enough cash reserves saved up to weather the storm should something bad happen. But when you're ready to start buying and holding, what options are out there? How exactly do you buy mobile homes? What are the funding options available? And what is the best route to take? Well, let's start with what I do. In episode two of this podcast, where I talk about my mobile home investing journey, I tell you about how I sold my entire portfolio of single family homes and how I got into mobile home investing in the first place. So I took the money from the sale of those homes, and I put them into purchasing mobile homes, all for cash, meaning I didn't take a mortgage or obtain financing on any of the properties I bought. And here's why. Because of the cash flow, which was my ultimate goal. You see, when you have a mortgage or financing in place on a property, a large portion 
of what you receive in rent or your monthly payment from a resident goes towards that, which is money that can come to you. Sure, we've all heard the saying, it's better to use other people's money or OPM for short and not your own money to purchase properties. Though, honestly, I really think it depends on your goals. For me personally, owning properties and having mortgages on them created a lot of stress of having to owe someone else money, not to mention less cash flow, which really didn't fit in with my goals, which was to have more cash flow and less stress in my life. As Lonnie Scruggs, the godfather of mobile home investing, and my personal mentor once told me, there are two sides of the fence. One where you owe someone else money, and the other side where someone owes you money. Now, everyone's on a side, so you just need to choose what side you want to be on. For me, I want to be on the side where people owe me money, not the other way around. So when choosing a funding strategy for my mobile home deals, I prefer to buy them with my own money from the sale of my single family home properties with all cash and not have a mortgage on any of them, which resulted in more cash flow and less stress because I didn't owe money to anyone else by not having mortgages on them. But apart from buying these homes with all cash, if you're not in a situation to buy them that way, then what other options are out there? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is to ask for owner financing from the sellers of the mobile homes you want to buy. But honestly, the majority of the sellers that I've dealt with when buying mobile homes in parks, they really want to just get out of it and get cashed out on their homes in one form or the other. Most of the sellers I've dealt with really don't want to take back owner financing. Sure, you can ask. It never hurts. But it's not really a route that I've taken personally when buying and holding mobile homes for cash flow. So... What else is out there? Another route you can take is to bring in a private lender or lenders in on your deals. Personally, I knew one of Lonnie's students who did just that. He worked with a private lender who funded all of his deals individually. So basically, he would buy homes in parks for under $5,000. His private lender would fund him at a certain percentage rate. Now, since this investor was selling these homes with seller financing, he would collect 
a down payment and a monthly payment. It was structured in a way so that the down payment would go towards the loan. And the monthly payment from his buyer was higher than what he owed monthly to the private lender. So he had some money in between, some positive cash flow left over, which went straight to a reserve fund. Once he paid off the lender, then the rest was gravy and cash flow to him. Sometimes there were items that needed repairs, and he had reserves for that. But he mostly stuck to cosmetic issues, where he'd do a lot of the repair work himself. So this setup worked for this particular investor, and he did close to 50 deals with this particular private lender. So, bringing in a private lender is one option you can take. Another route is to bring in a partner in on the deal. In the example I just mentioned, the investor just had a private lender. So, what's the difference? Well, with a partnership, you're both in on the deal together. Bringing in a lender is where you're in the deal and you just pay the lender their monthly payment. Basically, they just collect money from you, what you owe them to pay back the loan for the mobile home purchase. But with a partnership, it's different. You're both in it together. Sink or swim. The best partnerships are where each person has something different to offer and can bring something to the table. Usually, partnerships work when one partner can make up the difference on the other partner's weakness, and vice versa. Everyone has their own strengths and their own weaknesses. I knew one mobile home investor who had a partner. Now, this was when I was first starting out. And before I got into mobile home investing in the first place. This investor specialized in moving mobile homes out of parks and putting them in other parks. Basically, he had a relationship with a particular park where he'd help fill their lots for them. To entice him, he got some concessions like free lot rent until he fixed up the homes. On a side note, I'll talk more about moving mobile homes in a future episode, so stay tuned. In any case, since he established a relationship with a park manager willing to work with him, the deal would be that he moved homes into their park in exchange for free lot rent. Just in case you missed it, be sure to tune in to episode 8, where I talk about how to talk to mobile home park managers. In any case, this investor had done this a few times. And he had worked with the same mover. As he established his relationship with the mover, 
his mover soon became interested in mobile home investing. Though his mover felt that he didn't have the time or the know-how on how to do these deals like this particular investor. So they struck a partnership. Basically, the mover agreed to fund the deals and move the homes for free since he was a mover in exchange for getting 50% of the deal. So they split everything 50-50, depending on if they sold the homes for cash, on payments, or just rented them out. By creating a partnership, this investor was able to do more deals in a less period of time, and he had the financing to do it. The deal was that the investor would fix up the homes, locate them, and manage the move while the mover would just move the homes and fund the deals. So it worked out. Though I will warn you, if you're going to go the route of working with a partner, make sure you and your partner are on the same page. Be sure you can work together and each person can bring something to the table. The last thing you want is to be working with someone who has different goals and doesn't really add any value to the partnership. Taking it a step further, you may even want to have an attorney draft up a partnership agreement so everything is spelled out, just in case things go sour or situations change down the road where one person wants to get out of the partnership and the other person wants to stay. Have a clause where each partner can buy each other out, if it came to that. Otherwise, it's going to get messy in the future. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Personally, I've never worked with partners, though I've been offered many times to work with others willing to fund my deals if I do the work. But I haven't really gone down that road myself. These are basically the main ways to fund your deals. Now, I will tell you, there are some methods other investors have used that I don't really recommend you do when starting out as a mobile home investor. Here are a few. One method for funding that other investors have done include refinancing their own home to pull out cash to buy mobile homes, which another investor I knew did. Unfortunately, her and her husband bought a few mobile homes with the equity they had in their own personal residence and also other rental properties such as single-family homes. But eventually, they ended up getting a divorce. So things got messy when they split up, and they had to divide the assets and sell them. 
personally, I don't recommend pulling cash from your own personal residence to buy real estate. You never know what's going to happen in the future. And where you live and what you owe on your personal residence should be the least of your problems. That's just my opinion. Now, another route I've heard from others, which I really don't recommend, is getting a title loan against your car to buy mobile homes. Basically, this involves you getting a loan, which usually is at a high interest rate from a company that will lend you the money in exchange for collateral, which is the title to your car. If you end up not being able to pay back the loan, they can take your car and transfer title to it. This is really not a good route to take because honestly, you never know what's going to happen in the future. And in the worst case scenario, if you can't pay back the loan, which does tend to be at a higher interest rate anyways, then you're out of vehicle which isn't good for this business. Yet another route you can do is try to obtain traditional financing for your mobile home purchases. But it's pretty rare, especially if you're buying an older used mobile home as personal property, a.k.a not attached to land. Unless you have a relationship with a local bank or credit union, it's going to be pretty difficult to get financing on an older, used mobile home. Yes, you can try and ask. It doesn't hurt. You can also talk to mobile home dealerships to see if they have any referrals for lenders who may be able to do that. Just keep in mind you may be charged a higher interest rate if you do. I find the lower interest rates tend to be with newer mobile homes rather than older, used ones. But it doesn't hurt to ask and do some research on your own if you want to go that route. Credit cards are also another route I've heard others take. When I was a wholesaler doing single-family homes, I knew one rehabber who bought single-family homes on credit cards. He had a low interest rate for a short period of time, six months, I think. And during this time, he'd work on the home and turn it around. Though, it was pretty risky. Because what happens when you don't turn around that home in the time frame that you thought. Well, the interest rate goes up, and that's not a good thing. So I really don't recommend using credit cards for buying mobile homes yourself. On a side note, I did use a credit card to buy a few mobile homes in the past. Though this was when I was waiting for the funds for some of my single family home properties to close. 
Now, I already knew the amount of money I was getting, so it was just a matter of time for the properties to close as they were all under contract and in escrow. The properties closed as scheduled, and I was able to pay back the money on the credit card for the purchase of the mobile homes. Yes, I probably got lucky, and it could have ended up being a disaster, where the sale of my single-family home properties didn't close, and I'd have to wait even more. So overall, I really don't recommend this route. So there you have it. My advice on the options out there when it comes to funding your mobile home deals. As you can see, there are a lot of different avenues you can take. Though it's important to make sure you're in a position financially to buy and hold mobile homes before you even start. Have the cash reserves available should you need them in the future. If you're not, then you might need to take some time to build up cash, either through bird dogging or wholesaling by finding deals for other investors or through your job or a side business by saving up money every month. When you're ready to buy and hold, make sure to pick your method of funding wisely. Be sure that whatever route you choose to fund your deals matches with your overall goals as a mobile home investor. And if you're going to be investing with others by using a partnership or a private lender, be sure you have all the terms down and really know the person that you're working with. Otherwise, it can result in disaster down the road. If you're interested in reading more, I'll include an article in the show notes you may want to read that I wrote on the subject, titled Investing 101, How to Fund Your Mobile Home Deals, which may help. So, what did you think? Did this episode help you as a mobile home investor? I hope so. For more information on this episode, check out the show notes where I link up some of the resources mentioned here. You can find it at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash 14. And that is the number 14. Again, www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash 14. And if you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to share it with family and friends. And be sure to subscribe. If you have some time, I'd love to hear your feedback through a short Apple Podcast review. Until next time, this is Rachel Hernandez, a.k.a. Mobile Home Girl of the Adventures of Mobile Homes podcast, signing off. Thanks for listening.